So in order to tell you the origin of where our psychic abilities came from, I want to bring you to my neighborhood where I grew up. This was a house across the street that used to creep us out really badly. There was a monk that lived here and he, he ran like a halfway house. He used this garage, this double garage as a satanic church with an altar and it was all red and black inside. And we were like really creeped out by him. He wanted to buy our house when I was a, a young kid. So here's our house. We have a 22 room house and I moved in here when I was three months old. When I was little, I remember um, weird, weird things happening. Like, okay, so this is a current Google Maps photo of it. But right here, there's another house that was built. That was not there. This was just a, a huge front yard where we used to play ball. And this was all hedges here. Well, when we, I remember being little, me and my brother went in the front yard to play ball and we found bones on the ground. And like to this day, I know they were femur bones, like thigh bones. And we were just, I don't know, 10, 12, who knows. And like, I had a gut feeling that we should call the cops you know, with the bones there, but then I didn't because I was like, they're just going to laugh at us because we're kids. So we never did. But another incident, we went into the yard and we found a, a paper bag with, you know, live chicken's feet dead, right? Of course, inside the bag was chicken's feet, um, maybe four or six. And then there were pennies and then there were penny candies you know those individually wrapped candies and they were in a paper bag in our yard and I was like that is the strangest thing I ever saw it was like what is this about so you know being a little kid you don't know better you take the chicken's feet out we're sitting on the stoop and we're just squeezing the chicken's feet watching the claw open and close we had no idea what what it was but later we found out it was somebody putting a spell um and I, I asked someone who knew about witchcraft and they said a paper bag with pennies and penny candies and chicken's feet in, you know, placed on someone's property is a, um, like a witchcraft that you shall never prosper. And, you know, we knew there were witchy things going on across the street, but, you know, I was too young to put it all together then, but later I did. And then I remember... So this monk came over to our house and he said, I'm sweeping outside. Can you give me a piece of cardboard that I could use to scoop up the dirt? And we said, sure. So we gave him like a cardboard crate from a case of soda or something. And then my mother said, no, don't give him anything. This guy's into witchcraft. Once he has something of yours, he can do anything to you. And we're like, what? You know, we're just little kids. We don't know what the hell is going on. And then strange things happened in this house. So, um, the first thing that happened was our psychic abilities, I think you could call it, began. So, the very first one was my sister who was like two or three years older than me. Uh, she was babysitting my mother's friend's dog and the dog ran away and she was panicking because the, the woman was about to come home in a day or two and she had to tell the woman that her dog was gone forever and she was really panicking. She went to bed that night, woke up the next morning and said, I had a dream that the dog was at the red house two blocks away and the dog was just sitting on the front lawn. She said, I got to find out if, you know, maybe it's possible. So she got on her bicycle and I don't know how old she was. I want to say like 13, 14. I don't know. She gets on her bicycle. She goes down the street all the way down, 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 gets to the red house. And there's the dog sitting on the lawn exactly as it was in her dream. And that was the first thing that happened strange. Um, and then um, there were other incidences too. Now she had a dark side. And so a lot of times she would wish things to happen and they would actually happen and they were not good things. So this was our bedroom here that we shared in the back of the house it was a huge room and then this is a flat roof that you can't see but we used to go out there and tan and stuff so anyway she uh got a job 
I think she's age 16. She gets a job at McDonald's and Gino's, another hamburger joint. And she's like perplexed. I don't know which one I want to work at. So she blurted out, I hope McDonald's blows up. That way I don't have to make the decision. Well, the next day McDonald's was ashes. <laughs> and we were like, what? Now we're like freaking out. We're getting a little afraid of her. And then, um, I guess time goes by. So they eventually restored McDonald's. I mean, it was burnt to a crisp. They, they rebuilt it. And me and my friend Judy, we used to hang out together and we'd always sit on this front step here and just hang out for hours and hours, just talking and talking. Well, we got a job at McDonald's and it was our first job. And, uh, Judy's hours were cut. They took her off the register and then and they only had her cleaning tables and she was really upset about it because, you know, she was a little slow, but not, not real, you know, just a little slow. So I felt so bad for her because she was my best friend since like fourth or fifth grade. And I said, I remember saying exactly, well, if Patty can do it, then I can do it too. I hope McDonald's blows up and unbelievable. The next morning, uh, Judy's driving her sister to work and she passes McDonald's and it's all fire trucks. McDonald's burnt down and she couldn't believe it. She was in shock. The second time McDonald's burned down in less than two years. And it was the day after I said that. And the first time was the day after my sister said that. So, you know, I told this story before and I was like, I wonder if people believe me that this really happened because, you know, it really did. And then I said, you know, I'm going to tell this story publicly now. Only this time I'm going to back it up by, you know, going on um, newspaperclippings.com or newspapers.com and finding the actual articles to show that it really did happen. So hold on while I find the articles. Okay, so this is at pattersonfirehistory.com. It shows you here. May 30th, 1975, that was the first fire. And it shows you the address here. And this is McDonald's uh, burning down here. Oops. Um, it was pretty bad. It was very bad. Um, but eventually they rebuilt it. Now, uh, let me show you the the one that happened less than two years later, the day after I said that. Okay, I found the article here. It says, Deputy Chief Rains says he's cynical by nature, so he doesn't accept the fact that there could have been two fires there in two years without something going on. He's cynical, and yet he says he wants to believe Friday's fire was an accident. The building was sealed when the firemen got there in the early morning hours. They had a tough time trying to get inside. It doesn't make sense for someone to break in and set the fire and then be careful about sealing the place up on his way out. The fire started in the ceiling of the bathroom kitchen area and there are a lot of wires there so you could believe the origin of the fire is electrical. And yet business isn't always booming in downtown Patterson and there is competition for diners dollars. The area has become... Blooded with fast food places. Um, okay, so it says it's not hard for me to believe a competitor took matters into his own hands or had someone else take matters in hand for him. It seems clear that the franchise owners wouldn't want to hurt a business that was grossing 30000 a week or a million and a half a year. It's similarly clear that someone else could be jealous of that. There wasn't enough left of the place to take samples to send out to police labs to check for traces of a combustible liquid. The detective department probably won't brought into the what? Probably won't be brought into the case because Rains doesn't have enough to give them to get them involved. And so the fire at McDonald's isn't even being called suspicious, just undetermined. The thing that gets me is we probably will never know what started that fire. Hmm. Well, now you might. <laughs> uh, does this article continue? Or is that, that might be the end of it. Okay. Just wanted to show you that. 
So that's the story of 728 East 25th Street, Patterson. That's just one of the stories, actually. There were a lot of um, strange things that happened here. We even found a dead man in our yard once. But I used to be afraid to tell the story because of the monk that lived here that used to, like, scare the living daylights out of us. Every time we passed him or talked about him, something terrible would happen. Like, once we, you know, we had a great Dane named Bruda, and this monk was walking down the street with his robes, eating an ice cream cone, and our dog, I guess, wanted ice cream, so our dog jumped on him. And then, you know, next thing you know, out of the blue, our dog never ran out in the middle of the road, but the dog, this, you know, this was a yard. Dog ran through the yard, out in the middle of Park Avenue, and got hit by a car, and had to wear a cast for six months. Um... Never, ever did she do that before, but once she jumped on him while he was walking down the street here, um, that happened right after. Another time, we were uh, discussing him while we were sitting on that top step over here, Judy and I, and my best friend, and next thing you know, I stepped on this big chunk of glass, and my foot was, like, bleeding all over the place. Like, every time we talked about him or, you know even look to him bad things would happen i remember my mustang convertible was parked here one day oh no no i was driving and i passed him he looked at me i looked at him and i'm like holy crap what's gonna happen to me now i was so scared and i parked my car right here and i'm like oh thank god i got home safely nothing happened to me even though we locked eyes around the corner passing each other on the road well i opened my car door this i had a mustang convertible I open my car door. Next thing you know, a car comes zooming down the street, boom, hits my car door and breaks the door like halfway off. And I'm like, oh, man, right after I got done saying, I, you know, thank God I got home safely. And even though we locked eyes. And then I remember, you know, I was only like 18 or 19 years old. And I remember I used to jump like when you're young. You, you like spring out of the car with the door. You don't just open the door first and then get out like you do now as an adult. But that time I just happened to open the door first. So the guy that hit my car door, he's like, oh, well, I was on my side of the road. I didn't do anything wrong. So he just took off and left me with a broken car. <laughs> I'm not blaming him, I guess. But anyway, like those are just examples of the things that happened growing up there. There was a lot more that happened too. Maybe in a future video I'll tell you that, but a lot of scary stuff there. Anyway, I know this is outrageous telling you this, but, it, you know, these things really did happen, and I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not afraid to tell the story now. I'm not scared of him anymore because I did see his obituary, the monk. So hopefully nothing will happen with me telling you this and that's all i'm signing off for now let me know your thoughts on this i know it's outrageous but it's real okay take care now bye